It's been almost a decade since its original release, but Bioshock has re-emerged on current generation consoles thanks to Blind Squirrel Games. And the results aren't quite what we had in mind for this remaster, but that doesn't mean there hasn't been a substantial amount of work poured into this project. The question is, should these changes have been made in the first place, and does it make sense to play this over the original version? Let's jump in. But before we examine the changes made to the game itself, we should start with a look at how the different versions of the remaster itself stack up against one another. The Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions of Bioshock both operate at a full 1080p with the same less than optimal level of texture filtering. With so many new higher resolution textures in place then, this is a puzzling omission. As for the rest of the visuals, well, for all intents and purposes, these two versions of the game are basically identical to one another. And that extends to performance, where thankfully, things certainly appear to run a lot better than the included port of Bioshock Infinite. Once again, 60 frames per second is the target, and by and large, the consoles do a pretty good job of hitting that mark, which honestly is no great surprise considering that Bioshock runs on a heavily modified version of Unreal Engine that dates back to almost 15 years ago. Which is why I found it downright baffling that neither console is able to maintain 60 frames per second in all situations. Once the combat heats up and the effects are tossed around, well, the performance starts to drop with noticeable screen tearing as you can see here. Now, it doesn't happen enough to ruin the experience per se, but it does come as a somewhat of a surprise. At least the game is free of the hitching and skipping evident in Bioshock Infinite. So how about the game on PC? Well, the same remastered version created for consoles has also been released on the PC, and for owners of the original games then, the remastered version is free. Yep, it shows up in your library ready for download if you own the previous games. As expected then, it basically looks identical to the console release, but with the ability to increase texture filtering quality and resolution. Not to mention eliminate the frame rate drops. So far then, we basically have three identical versions of Bioshock Remastered, but as I alluded to earlier, there have been some pretty drastic changes here. We'll get to the problems in a moment, but first I want to discuss the amount of work the team has put into this conversion. All three versions of the game include an entirely new set of textures, along with lots of redone geometry and modified lighting. This applies to enemy character models as well, which have been completely remade and are much more detailed now. Basically, the entire game has received a fresh coat of paint. And it first blush, it actually looks pretty good. Now beyond that, the game also features a physics simulation which updates at the full 60 frames per second rather than the much lower rate of the original, something which could be corrected with a mod, mind you, but it's nice to see it implemented by default here. But really, the problem here is that not all of these changes are necessarily for the better. Now this is of course going to be a matter of opinion, but a lot of the changes made to the game have a pretty significant change on the look and feel of the world. Right away, we noticed something was off with the way the flames penetrate the water here during this introduction sequence. It just doesn't look quite right in the remaster as it's missing some of the underwater effects here. The intensity of these lights leading up to the lighthouse have also been reduced in the remaster, making them look rather dull in comparison, which is strange. But once we reach the lighthouse then, the impact of redoing the textures starts to become clear as we see a massive reduction in specular highlights, which you wouldn't expect considering that this tower is surrounded by water, so the elimination of the shiny texture surface looks a bit out of place. Some changes do work for the better however, once we climb into the bathosphere and begin our descent into Rapture, we can now see that the city is covered in additional seaweed and other overgrowth along the bottom of the floor here. Is it true to the original vision? Perhaps not, but in this case I actually think it looks nice enough and it definitely brings something new to the table without spoiling the original atmosphere. Oh, and this guy all the way back here has a higher triangle count on the remastered version. And sometimes these changes just look different, neither better nor worse, but you can see the difference here. Though if we continue walking through this section then, note the missing lighting here along the top of this tunnel. You also notice a difference in the way the water is rendered here in this early section. It's really just a change in the textures used, but it does have sort of an impact on the intensity of the water flowing through the tunnel.
The standing pools of water used throughout the game also tend to look a little different as well. You can judge for yourself which one is better though. These types of changes are pretty evident throughout the experience, and while the changes are not inherently bad, and some of them do actually look quite good, the difference is often stark enough that it feels as if the original vision has been tampered with somewhat. It's like touching up a Blu-ray release of a movie by cranking up the noise reduction and color saturation. Then there are the glitches. And before showing these issues, we should note that 2K has committed to producing a patch, at least for the PC version of the game. So some of this stuff should be fixed soon. Anyways, in several areas we ran into texture issues like this on all three versions of the game. Yeah, it's not looking great here. Then in another area we ran into this problem while playing the PC version. A PC exclusive glitch? Sure, why not? And have you ever wondered, if only you could talk to these creatures, then perhaps you could try to make friends with them, form alliances. Now that would be interesting. And it seems that Bioshock Remastered has you covered there as well. But this is just what we ran into. Some users are reporting things like hard crashes and lost saves, which can actually force you to start the game over from the beginning. Then we have the audio quality. The sound is more compressed overall and lacking the reverb of the original. while the audio mix itself just isn't quite right, with all of the sounds being somewhat leveled here. We even heard things like the scratchy sound being removed from audio logs. Dr. Steinman said he'd release me today. Ryan didn't come to see me since the New Year's attack, not once. Dr. Steinman said he'd release me today. Ryan didn't come to see me since the New Year's attack, not once. A minor change, to be sure, but something that does impact the presentation in a subtle way. If you're playing the game on the PC, Bioshock actually defaults to a 2.0 stereo mode even when connected to a surround sound system, and to fix it, you actually have to manually edit one of the game's INI files like this. In comparison though, the original game actually gives you a choice within the menu itself. Why the change? Oh, and while we're in the options, I should also point out that the graphics settings have been toned down significantly. Of course, this is based on a rather old game, so it's not likely that you'd really need to adjust those settings at this point, but still. PC users are also forced to deal with things like forced mouse acceleration, which requires additional tinkering, and even when doing so, the end results never quite felt right. Something which also extends to the right stick look on all three versions of the game when using a gamepad. It just doesn't control as tightly as you'd like. So where does that leave Bioshock Remastered? Some people will be quick to throw around the terms lazy remaster, but that's clearly not the case here. A lot of effort has been poured into remaking assets and making changes to the game, and working with such old code is no easy task, really. But still, the game is missing some features and some of the atmosphere of the original release, and a lot of users have run into bugs. And on top of that, console performance still isn't quite as good as it should be. So this isn't really the optimal remaster, but it's not necessarily a bad one either. If you're lucky enough not to run into the bugs, you could actually have a pretty good time here. But for the purists and fans of the game, you might not like some of the changes that have been made. Now if you have a PC and you own the original games, you may as well give it a shot just to see what you think. But on consoles, you might want to think about it, especially when you consider the poor performance we observed in Bioshock Infinite. And if you're trying to decide between Xbox One and PlayStation 4, well, I can at least tell you in this case that there is basically no real difference. It's really just a matter of which controller you prefer. But that's really about all there is to say about Bioshock for now. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative in any way, be sure to give us a like and subscribe. And until next time, this is John signing off.